The Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G, such a great little phone, priced at £339, which is the mid-range territory, and powering this device is the Snapdragon 7S Gen 2, which again is a mid-range chip. If you're into Geekbench scores, have a look at this. 1031 single core, 2927 multi-core. I've been using this phone for a couple of weeks now. Performance has been really good. I mean, it's not as snappy as say like the S23 Ultra and your, your big flagships, but it's managed all the tasks that I've thrown at it, including some quite intense gaming as well, such as Fortnite. Now the model I'm using has eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of internal storage at UFS 2.2. Now you get quite a lot for your money in terms of display for this mid-range device. A 1.5K flat screen display with 120 Hertz refresh rate and offers up to 1800 nits of peak brightness. So using it in direct sunlight is not gonna be a problem. Now underneath this beautiful display, we have a first for Redmi. We have an in-screen fingerprint sensor. Previously, the sensors were embedded into the power button, which I personally, I quite prefer in the power button, but this has worked pretty much flawlessly throughout my testing. Just make sure you get some good readings when registering your fingerprint. Build quality is great. On the front, we have Gorilla Glass Victus, but you're always gonna get marks and scratches on glass, no matter what sort of level of Gorilla Glass it is. Fortunately, there is a pre-installed screen protector to add that extra protection you need. The back is made of glass, there's a nice matte finish, and I love this color as well. And the frame is made of plastic, which when feeling it, it doesn't feel like plastic to me. It feels more, well, it feels and looks more of a sort of premium material. This is dual SIM compatible as well, so you can fit two nano SIMs at the same time. But also the software, the phone supports eSIM. So if you wanna go down the eSIM route, you can do as well. And for all you wired headphone lovers, there is a 3.5 mil socket on the top of the Redmi phone, so you can enjoy wired headphones. The battery life has been decent on this smartphone, about about six to seven hours of screen on time. And by bedtime, I'll probably have about 10 or 15% left, which is actually pretty decent. Now, one thing to remember, there is no wireless charging. You don't typically get wireless charging on sort of mid-range devices anyway. So we do get stereo speakers on here, one at the bottom and one built into the earpiece as well. And the sound quality for a mid-range device is pretty decent. And in terms of software, Android 13, MIUI 14 over the top. Still waiting for that Hyper OS, can't wait for that. But the experience is great. The software is really good on, on the Redmi device. Performance, like I said, with gaming and stuff has been good as well. So let's jump onto the camera system. There's a whopping 200 megapixel sensor on this. There's no optical lenses on here, so there's no optical zoom, but it's in sensor zooming. So it takes a 200 megapixel photo, and if you are, say, at four times, it will crop into that 200 megapixel sensor and you still have that great detail and great quality. Now, in order to shoot at 200 megapixel, you do have to select that within the camera software there. But if you're taking normal photos using the normal mode in the camera software, they pixel bin down to 12 megapixel photos. Now, on the whole, the quality of the pictures are really nice, especially when you have good lighting conditions. Obviously, when it gets a little bit darker, this camera will sort of struggle and start introducing grain into some of the photos. But with lots of natural light, this camera can really excel. In the camera software, you have four options. You can shoot to ultra wide 0.6x, one times, two times, and four times. And like I said before, they're not optical sensors, it's just in sensor cropping. You can expect decent results from portrait mode as well, and you can manually change the f-stop from f1 all the way to f16. 
F1 giving you a much shallower depth of field and the edge detection in most part is excellent. Now video mode on the rear, you can shoot up to 4K 30, that's the absolute maximum. There is image stabilization in there as well, it's not optical, it's electronic and the quality and stabilization is good. This is 4K 30. And there is the lovely cathedral. Really smooth and steady videos are that. Now this is two times. Now on two times you can shoot a 4K but 4K 30. This is a really nice focal length, I like this. You're taking in the, the look of the cathedral, Colby, yeah? Yeah. Is it nice? I don't know, they're just old people <laughs> in an old cathedral. This is two times. And I'm walking. Stabilization seems to be pretty good actually. Obviously, in lower light scenarios, you're going to lose a little bit of that quality. Now, if you want to shoot ultra wide video, you're limited to 1080p 30. You can't shoot ultra wide at 4K. But again, this is a mid range device. Now, this is ultra wide. <laughs> but ultra wide is only available at 1080p. Just Bear that in mind. So a 1080p 30 on ultra wide. And what I do like about this camera software, if you just quickly swipe down on there, you get the settings there really, really quickly. From here, you can shoot macro if you want. I haven't really used it, but macro is there. If you go all the way across to more, there's a few other settings there as well, and also a short film setting, which I actually played around with the other day. You get like a template and you can record up to one to three second clips. It puts it all together into a little film. I did take some nighttime photography as well using the automatic night mode that kicks in when you're using the Redmi device and overall the pictures are looking really nice for a phone at this price point. Okay so we're in 4k 30 now at night. Stabilization is looking nice and smooth. It's good to see we're getting stabilization on a phone at mid-range at this price point as well. Now if we flip it round on the front facing camera, you have a 16 megapixel sensor. You can shoot up to 1080p 60, so there's no 4K on the selfie. Again, it's a mid-range device. Portrait mode, maybe not as good as it is on the rear. It did struggle with some edge detection on some of the selfies I did take, but obviously that was with a little bit lower light as well. So obviously it will struggle in lower light conditions. But out in the sunshine, it absolutely excels. So we are limited to 1080p 60 on the front, so there's no 4K. Uh, there seems to be a bit of stabilization work in there. But yeah, 1080p is your maximum on the front facing video. <laughs> so 1080p 30, pretty much the same. Not much difference. I'm holding it with one hand as well. Just started raining now. Typical. Just started raining. And we're in the dark. This is the front facing camera. So that pretty much wraps things up. Standout features for me is the gorgeous AMOLED 1.5K display with 120Hz refresh rate and also that whopping 200 megapixel sensor on the back which allows a lot of convenience for taking large photos and cropping into certain sections as well without losing much detail. Uh, the camera system overall is good, battery life is good, performance is good. So for £339 brand new, it's not a bad choice at all. If you look at other mid-range devices, so obviously the popular Pixel 7a, I mean, brand new, you're looking at £449, I think that was starting at. Uh, so it's over £100 cheaper uh, for 
a decent mid-range device with the Redmi Note 13 Pro 5G. Thank you all very much for watching. If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments down below. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.